Okay, so in our previous video, we made the claim that regular Markov chains have what's called a unique stationary matrix. And we're not going to prove that, but what we are going to do in this example is we're going to talk about how we actually find that unique stationary matrix. So first we're going to discuss a few properties. And what we're going to do is we're going to let P be the transition matrix for a regular Markov chain. So one of the properties, it says there's a unique stationary matrix S that can be found by solving the equation S times P equals S. And again, we'll solve that equation in this video. We'll do another example of this in, in, the, in the video after this. And that one we'll put it in a, a bit more of an applied setting, but be the, it'll be the exact same idea. Another property, it says given any initial state matrix S sub zero, it says the state matrices S sub K will approach that stationary matrix S. Okay, so if you think about that in terms of like market share, maybe as we did in, the, in one of my examples, it says sort of no matter what the initial market share is, it's always going to approach the same, uh, the same overall market share in the long run. One other property, it says if we look at powers P to the K of our transition matrix, it says those are going to approach a limiting matrix, uh, P, P bar, where each row of P bar is equal to the stationary matrix S. Okay, so let's do an example here. So let's suppose that the transition matrix for a Markov chain has entries 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0 0.8. We're going to find that stationary matrix S. So again, all we have to do is we're going to solve the equation S times P equals S. So let's suppose that our stationary matrix S, that has entries, we'll call it S1 and S2. So if we multiply that by P, so 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, it says when we do that, we're going to get our stationary matrix S1 and S2 right back. So this will give us a system of equations to solve. So notice if we do our matrix multiplication, we would have S1 times 0.6 or 0.6 S1 plus, then we would have uh, S2 multiplied by 0.2 and that's going to equal the first entry of S1. Likewise, if we do uh, if we multiply again, we'll have S1 multiplied by 0.4, and then we'll have S2 multiplied by 0.8. We'll add those together, and that's going to equal S2. Another uh, important equation here, recall, you know, if you think about this like we did before in one of the examples as terms of market share, uh, the market share has to add up to 100%, so we would also get that S1 plus S2 that has to equal 1. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I've got a system of equations to solve. It turns out that if you only use the first two equations, you're actually going to get a dependent system. So you can, you can test that on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm either going to use the first or the second equation along with the third equation to get my unique solution. Okay. So, it doesn't matter which one we use. I'll take the first equation and our third equation. We have to use the third equation. It doesn't matter which of the first two that you use. I think uh, what I'm going to do is just simply solve this using a bit of substitution. So let me rewrite them here real quick. So I'm just going to solve this system using substitution. Again, you could use elimination by addition, you could use row reduction, you could use whatever, whatever property or whatever technique you want. So I'm going to take my second equation, I'll solve for S1. So if we subtract S2, we'll have S1 equals 1 minus S2. And I'm just going to substitute that back into the uh, first equation that I have here. So let's see, we've got 0.6 multiplied by S1 which is going to be 1 minus 
S2 plus 0.2 times S2. And it says that's going to equal S sub 1, which again is going to be 1 minus S2. So notice now we have an equation involving only S2. So at this point, let's see here. So if we distribute, we've got 0.6 minus 0.6 times S2 plus 0.2 times S2. And that's going to equal 1 minus S2. So on the left side, we've got 0.6 minus, let's see, if we take 0.6, or if we take a negative 0.6 S2 plus 0.2 S2, that'll leave us with negative 0.4 S2. Leaving the right side alone still. And now I'm just going to collect all my, my variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So let's see, if we add S2 to both sides, if we add S2 to both sides, we have 0.6, let's see, so 0.4 S2 plus 1 S2, that's going to leave us with positive 0.6 S2. On the right, we still have our 1 left over. Now I'm going to simply subtract 0.6 from both sides. So if we do that, we've got 0.6 S2. 1 minus 0.6 will simply be 0.4. So now we can divide both sides by 0.6. And we'll be left with S2 equals 0.4 over 0.6, or 4 over 6, which is the same thing as 2 thirds, which is 0.6 uh, repeating. So we can even round that off, let's say, to 0.67. Well, we know that since uh, S1 plus S2 add up to 1, that would tell us that S1 equals 1 third, or 0.3 repeating, or again, we could round that to roughly 0.33. So what it says in this case is, it says our stationary matrix, it says our stationary matrix S will have a first entry of 1 third, and the second entry will be exactly two-thirds. Or again, we could round that. If you think about it in terms of market share based on that transition matrix, it says, uh, you know, if you think about this as being company A and then the competitors like we did in one of our examples, it says in the long run, it says that company A can expect to have roughly 33% of the market share while the rest of the market share goes to its competitors.